The session continues, a fish called the Sergeant, 39 pounds, 12 ounces, on account of those three scales on the wrist of his tail there. And uh, this one came on the middle rod, the first bite on the middle rod. So they're obviously getting on the bait. You'll probably know that I'm a massive fan of stiff rigs when I'm fishing over boilies, and this situation is no exception. On here, we've got a length of 20 pound IQ2, which is a fairly stiff material. It's fluorocarbon, so it's harder for the fish to see, but that's not really why I'm using it. I'm using it for the stiffness. I've tied it myself with a size two curve shank. That may sound like a really big hook to you, but we're fishing for 70 pound fishing here. And when I construct a rig, it's always constructed to land the biggest fish in the lake that I'm fishing. There's no point hooking a really big fish on light tackle and then losing it. It'd just be soul destroying. So I've done my favorite whipping knot at the top of the hook, then basically cut off a long length, threaded on a micro rig swivel, and then done the knotless knot. Very, very simplistic. You've seen me tie this at Sandhurst as well. And then we've probably got, I would say, eight inches of hook link, something like that. And because of the stiffness of it and having that little tiny sinker in the middle, it will sit away from the lead as it hits the bottom. So I'm not using foam in this situation. I want to be as accurate as I can with the casting. So I'm just tying the bait up with a bit of PVA tape to stop it flaying around on the cast. I have sometimes wound it in with the hook actually embedded into the bait where it's flown around on the cast. So to stop that happening, a little bit of the PVA tape just cures that. And that's gonna sit out nice and straight and will be in contact with the lead really quickly. And that's the thing I like about this rig. It's very stiff, it's very springy, and as soon as it goes in their mouth, they're feeling the weight of the lead. And that is exaggerated massively by that fella there. That's called a cog lead, which stands for center of gravity. You can see there, I'm picking the lead up from the very center of the lead. Now you would have seen this on some of our other films a couple of years ago. We've been mucking around with it, mucking around with it for quite a long time. And we've come up, if I pull this out, with that little fella there. So you've got a swivel basically with a peg molded around it. And that gives you two options. You can fish with it as a hinge. So if I hold that, you can fish with it as a hinge like that. Yeah, and there's another version where you can fish with it fixed, which I'll show you in a minute. But that basically pushes back into the side of the lead like that and that forms your lead system and then when the fish picks up the bait what basically happens that will come off like that and if I keep shaking the lead the lead comes off as well so it turns into a normal lead clip system and you can see on this one uh, it's actually attached to a hybrid lead clip so there's going to be a couple of options with these one is attached to a hybrid lead clip and then the other one is just for a normal lead clip so your bit of tubing and rubber will just push on the back if I can put that lead back on again. It's exactly the same as fishing a normal lead clip. So I'm just wetting that, pushing it back over the end. Doesn't need to go on very far because the cog system is taking the force of the cast. That pushes back into there like that. And that is the system ready to go. And with a stiff link like that and the thick tubing I've got on the end there, that's the dark matter tubing, it hardly ever changles. I still watch it in the air to make sure it's okay, but I'm more than happy to cast this at night and know that it's sitting perfectly on the bottom. And it's been really successful for me here and loads of other places all around Europe. And then the second option, almost exactly the same. So lead is set up everything the same, but can you see there at the front of the lead, I haven't got a hinge. I've got an anti-tangle sleeve that pushes everything out straight. This is Ali's preferred way of fishing it. He thinks it's better for anti-tangle. Personally, I like the hinge system, but he likes the fact that that anti-tangle sleeve throws everything out. And having that sinker in the middle of the hook link obviously helps to do that. But like me, he wants the hook link out perfectly straight. So when the fish picks it up, it's in contact with that lead straight away. And that is the beauty of this system. You're picking up the whole lead immediately. And I'm absolutely convinced that this catches me more fish than a normal lead clip setup. You might be thinking, well, why didn't I use it at Carpassons? Well, I did the first night, had five fish on a normal lead clip system. It suited the ready tied rigs that I was using as well. So I've just carried on using it. But if the fishing is tough, this is my number one choice. So that is my preferred system for fishing over boilies. We'll just finish off with the hook bait. We teased you at Carpassons and I'm not gonna tell you what this one is. All I'll say, it's peaches and cream. So you'll have to work out what flavor combination I've put in there. But basically, 
higher track hook baits at the start of the week and then going over to probably matching the hatch at the end of the week. So that's a hybrid cork dust slow sinker and the fish have eaten loads and loads of bait. I swap over from the higher tracks to the matching ones and hopefully we'll be snaring a big one.